Hi everyone, happy new year to you all. And today I wanted to film my favorite books of 2015. Um, this was hard for me to pick. Um, I have a more extensive list that I'm gonna put down on the description box, but I'm just gonna list like five or six of them that are like my top, top faves. All right, so first I wanna say my fave one of my favorites, Near to the Wild Heart by Clarissa Spector. I love these editions. Um, these editions come with four of her novels. Um, and they all form, if you connect them all together, they all form the shape of her face. Um, and also the back as well. So they're really beautiful. Um, I just, I love this book love this book just made me fall in love with her even more and makes me just want to buy everything she has and just read it all and I'm excited to read more of her this year um this book um it's written in kind of um you know kind of Virginia Woolf style a little bit stream of consciousness is about like a woman from childhood to like adulthood, um, you know, talking about her life, her thoughts, um, her marriage and the things she goes through and just like self discovery and 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 philosophical things and it's just um you know, it's just it's fantastic. I'm like I I'm in love with this book. I love it so much. Next one of my faves is um, last words from Montmartre, I'm not sure exactly how to say it, but it's by, it's trans, it's by Q-Motion, I, I totally butchered her name, but it's translated by Ari Larissa Heinrich, and this book is like, it's a mixture of different things. It's like part confession, part love letter, part fiction, memoir, um, and also part suicide note because this author, she um, committed suicide at a very young age. Um, um, she's, you know, very, she's very famous she's a Taiwanese novelist um <clears throat> and she and it said that she committed suicide at the age of 26 and she left behind this unpublished work um and I th and li and there are also um more another book of hers that will be coming out in like the next next year not this year next year um but this book is, is very, it's a very emotional book, very hard to read because, uh, because you know uh, the, what's gonna happen. It's about a lost love and like how that feels and like, it's a very emotional book if you ever pick it up. Okay, my next favorite is Incubation, A Space for Monsters by Bonnie Capil. And she is one of my all-time fave writers, like, right now. Um, she's amazing. Um, she, she, um, a very experimental writer. She's, like, a poet. And it's, like, it's hard to, like, really, you know, figure out what she does. But what she does is, like, it's very unique style. Um, and this has a lot of, this talks a lot about, um, you know, feeling like, you know, about, like, displacement and, like, being an immigrant and, and, um, and the idea of, like, um, of, like, being a monster and feeling like other, um, also traveling and what it means to be, like, kind of, like, touristy not Taurus, sorry, um, traveling, like, um, what do I want to say, like, cross-country, that type of thing, um, it's wonderful, love it, can't wait to read more of her work, she's amazing, one of my all-time faves, 
Okay, next I read The Woman Warrior by Maxine Han Kingston and this is so amazing. I read this earlier in the year and I just I just love the story, especially the story of the woman warrior and it's like basically like it's kind of like a collection of like different like um short stories kind of um it's wonderful 100% recommend it I can't wait to read more of hers because this is my first book that I've read of hers and it's just wonderful yes <laughs> I don't know what else to say um and next one that I recently read that I think I've I've I feel like I'm pretty sure I finished it in December I think I don't I'm not sure or November November or December and it's Serious Blooms at Night a novel by Shani Moto and this novel is it reminds me a lot of of um of our Aaron Dati Roy's novel The God of Small Things which is also one of my favorites and I also read that book last year I believe um, and it's kind of written in that same style of, of, um, past and present, how you're, like, weaving in through the past and present, um, and it starts, the book starts off with, in the present, and it, it, it goes to the past, and, like, all these different things, um, through time, and, and you're meeting different characters, it's a very, it's a queer novel, um, it talks a lot about, family there's there's um topics about um there's a lot of things about nature and like connection to nature um uh um as well as um flowers and insects and um fa like a lot of abuse um of physical abuse sexual abuse between family members um um, um, the main character, her connection with her sister, and that loss, and, like, her, she's also in the beginning of the novel, the main character, she's, um, is accused of a murder, and they're trying to figure out whether or not she did it or not, and, um, she's also set in, like, this home, where she ends up, and then throughout the novel, you're seeing kind of how she ended up where she did, which is very similar to The God of Small Things in that sense, because, you know, if you read that book, you're, you're starting from a certain point, and then you're seeing how you got there. But I do think if, if you've read The God of Small Things and really enjoyed it, I think you'll also enjoy this. Um... It's, oh, it's wonderful, and the language is beautiful, and just like all of these books that I've mentioned, all of these, um, the language is wonderful, I, I'm just in love with all these books, and as well, I also wanted to mention two other books that I don't own, I don't own a copy of, but I've read this year, and it's Citizen, an American Lyric by Claudia Rankin, which I'm sure you've all heard about, um, and it's Fan, fan, fantastic, very emotional, very, very, a very now book, you know, talking about, um, you know, discussions on Serena Williams, um, discussions on microaggressions, discussions on race, um, and racism, and, and, um, all these different day-to-day -day interactions that really are kind of like, things that you can't even believe that happened, but do happen, um, and it's a very important book, wonderful book, I love Claudia Rankin, she's amazing, and if you haven't read it, then you must, um, and another, um, book I really loved reading this year is a book of poems, and it is, um, The Dream of a Common Language by Adrian Rich, and I complete I'm in love with this collection of poems oh my goodness like this collection like made me fall in love with Adrian Rich and I just want to read everything of hers and I just love it and I'm sad I don't own it and I just want to own it I just need to buy it so I can just reread them and just gush all over again um but yes those are all like my top 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 faves 
like I said in the beginning, I have, an, I have a more extensive list that I will link down below and then you can see all of the books I was gushing over this year. Let me know what your favorites are um, or books that you didn't really like this year. Um, yeah, I'm, I, always, I always love these videos and I always love seeing what people's top faves are because I'm always interested in, in, maybe, in maybe seeing other people's favorite books that maybe I've never heard of and maybe want to pick up. So yeah, I hope you guys are having an amazing, amazing new year. Hope you hope you have all amazing goals and things you want to accomplish. And yeah, see you guys later. Bye.